during my rambunctious teenage years, I remember frequently receiving two wonderful pieces of advice from my father especially. One of them was easy for me to do. But the other was much difficult for me to do even if I wanted to. Both of them were very short and very concise. The first one I heard a lot was shut up because I tend to talk too much. <laughs> In case you don't know. <laughs> Even when I wasn't invited to, to give my opinion, I gave it anyways. No wonder I became a pastor. Because now I can't stop talking. I'm a talking head. But growing up, every now and then, I'd get a slap upside the head for not shutting up. And I quickly learned to keep my mouth. The second piece of advice that I still receive every now and then in various fashions and from various individuals whenever I'm not acting my age and that is grow up. You, you get that too? <laughs> now that one is difficult to do. You can find out if a person has shut up by simply watching if that individual's lip is still moving. If they stop talking, then you know they've shut up. Am I right? Yeah. Oh, you can, you, can, you can still be muttering words underneath your breath like Mr. Bean. But you've fan la bouche. Excuse my French. But it's tough to know if a person has grown up or is growing up. You can tell when a person is shut up. But it's tough to know if a person has grown up or is growing up. Because how many here know just because you've grown older in age doesn't mean you've grown up in stage. Amen. Oh, this message, this message is going to be good. You, you've grown old, but you haven't grown up. Don't you know people who maybe are growing older in years, but haven't really grown up in attitude or behavior? You, 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 know, you know any mama's boy? Don't point fingers. Uh -huh. I'm talking about a 40-year-old, a 40-year-old man who is still acting like a 10-year-old boy. Have you ever gone back to your high school reunion? And all you could say when you start seeing and hearing people you haven't seen in a long time talk is good grief. Oh, I'm coming to that. You are more than a little surprised, Dickin. You're more than a little surprised. Not so much because of what had happened with the passing of years, but because of what hasn't happened. Oh, everybody's gained weight. You, 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 know, you know that homecoming queen in your class. Ain't looking like the homecoming queen anymore. 
She's more like, little Johnny, go get mama. <laughs> the homecoming queen, homecoming king in your class ain't looking like homecoming king anymore. He's all bald and got a little pot <laughs> and walking with big man. <laughs> no. Oh, 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 they've changed clothes. They've gotten jobs. They're driving cars. But they really haven't changed a bit. They still talk loosely. Like they used to talk back in the high school days. They still act childishly. Like they used to act. And what do you do? When somebody refuses to grow up. If your father was like my father in my teen years, then you probably have heard your father say to you, Oh, grow up, will you? And if growth isn't happening in a child, any good parent would take that baby to the doctor and say, Doc, something is wrong. Our baby ain't growing. No parent or doctor will say, ah, oh well, uh, it's okay, that baby wasn't meant to grow. It, it, it's just going to be a midget forever. Talk to me, somebody. So that as we come to our text this morning, the aged apostle Peter is going to be saying to us, and the Christian is writing to, that what is true, in the natural is equally true in the spiritual so that like a good parent you'll be saying to us it's time to grow up in the lord Amen. look at two people next to you and say grow up grow up oh, grow up grow up grow up grow up somebody holler grow me up lord yeah 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 it's time to grow up in the lord you know you can't be too big for God that you have no room to grow. Even if you've been saved for 40 years, walking with Jesus is not about whether or not you've arrived. But what the Lord wants to know is, what the Lord wants to know is, are you growing in him? Do you know him more than you did a year ago? Are you more a grown Christian today than you were five years ago? Are you grown or you've shrunk? Honey, I shrunk the kids. That's the issue here, Chandra. The issue is not how long you've been coming to church. The issue is, are you growing in your walk with Christ? Because if you want to walk with Jesus, you can't stay still. There can't be no standing still if you want to jet with Jesus. Is this simple? Brother Franz, what you're doing well, give me the light point. Is this simple? If you're jetting with Jesus, if you do not progress, you regress. Ooh, that is so good. Let me say that again. If you do not progress, you regress. Which really tells me, which really tells me, anytime you find yourself, listen to me very carefully, anytime you find yourself still struggling to want to go back into the world that you've been saved from, like discarded Christians were running from Nero, anytime you find yourself still struggling to go back to where you've been saved from, and you can't seem to overcome that temptation, then you need to check your growth chart in Jesus. It, 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 it's like when our kids were little, they went to growth chart thingy. So they have all their growth charts in Adam's room, all on the wall. Remember that? I painted it the other day. Is it still there? Or we painted through Adam. We painted it all here. They grow now. <laughs> 
but, but, but back then they were into this growth chat thingy and 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 they were trying to see who should eat more broccolis and more pounded yam because they know they need to grow <laughs> and what peter is going to be doing here in this text is he's going to be showing us some growth indicators it's going to be telling us how to grow in respect to our salvation see then verse 2 give me verse 2 it says in verse 2 that by it by it meaning by what is going to be telling us by it you may grow in respect to salvation in other words yes we've been made holy like we heard last Sunday we know we've been made holy so I can confidently say I am holy like my daddy in heaven is holy because I've been reborn I'm Holy Ghost filled I'm water baptized I'm redeemed praise God you have been apolutrosis by the blood of Jesus. Tell, tell, tell your neighbor one more time, I'm holy, I'm holy, I'm holy. They may not believe you, but you're holy. But how do you stay holy? How do you stay holy in a perverse, dirty world? That's what Peter is going to be telling us here. He's going to be telling us how the word of God. Someone say the word. word. He's going to be telling us how the word of God is what God uses to help us stay holy in an unholy world. So for the remainder of our time, let me quickly give you the two spiritual growth modus operandi. Two spiritual growth modus operandi that Peter gives in this text that would help you grow and know if you're growing in respect to your salvation. Two spiritual growth modus operandi. Who is ready to feed? Oh, 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 oh. I said, who here is ready to feed? Number one, get rid of junk food. That's a tough one, isn't it? Ooh, you should see Dickie Neal's Put the camera. You should see Dickie Neal's face. Ooh. He says in verse 1 of chapter 2. Verse 1 of chapter 2. Give it to me. He says, therefore, tying into what he's been talking about in previous verses about holiness, they can tie. Therefore, putting aside all malice, somebody say malice. malice. All deceit, say, say deceit. All hypocrisy, say hypocrisy. All envy, say envy. And all slander, say all slander. Hmm. Quite the least. Putting aside. You've heard the whole saying. You are what you eat, haven't you? I'm not going to ask you what you eat a lot of yet. But, but there's a cartoon. There's a cartoon. And uh, it, it's got this little squirrel. This, give me a picture of the squirrel. It's got this little squirrel uh, in a psychiatric office. Uh, so, so, so you picture a, a squirrel. Picture that squirrel. The next slide. Sitting in a psychiatric couch. All right. Laying there with his little furry arms behind his back and he's spilling out his, his squirrel guts <laughs> to this psychiatrist okay can you picture that so 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 use your scientific imagination now this the caption reads this is the squirrel speaking now the caption reads when i learned that you are what you eat it was then i realized i'm not <laughs> oh, oh some of you will get it when you get home For us to capture what Peter is saying here, 
I want you to pretend you're in a restaurant. Are you, are you okay with that? You can, you can manage that? And you'll still be here? All right. Okay. Pretend you're in a restaurant. Pretend you're in a restaurant. And, and you're seated at a table. And, and you, you can pick from the menu. Okay? So you're in a restaurant. I heard, as the menu is coming now, I heard that someone, I heard someone once says, really, diet is no rocket science. Diet is no rocket science. And by, and by that they mean you can put food in two categories. Only, not three, two categories. All food fall into two categories. Good or bad. Got it? So, I have a plate full of broccolis here that I brought with me. And I have a box loaded with Tim Horton's donuts with me too. I, 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 I'm, looking for, I'm looking for a suspect. Uh, let, me, let, me, let me see. I'm looking for a taste. I'm looking for a taste. I'm looking for a taste tester. Let, let's see. Where's the taste tester here? I, I see Lady Kemi's hand up. Ooh, Lady Kemi's hands up. Okay, okay. So, 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 so I, got, I got me two, two different categories of food here. Now, 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 I'm not going to give you, she's pointing to this, I'm not going to give you this. You can have all the broccolis you want. Go ahead and have all the broccoli. Go ahead and have all the broccoli. Don't you, your, your mama never told you broccoli is good for you? Okay, you, 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 you help me hold on to this. Let me hold on to this. Okay. So, 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 this, this, this box of yummy, ah, put the camera on. Ah, this, look, look at that. He's got a Canadian, he's got Toronto Raptors. Oh, Dickie, you're going to like this. Look at that Toronto Raptor one. I didn't even notice. You, you, you can, you can take one of these babies. Filled with Greece and lured and sugar and, 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 and bad fat and it can make your cholesterol go high mm. 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 Oh, I'm, I'm sorry thinking I got that one mm. 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 That you become. I say you better understand. That you become. What you eat. Oh somebody's not hearing me. You can sugarcoat it. All you want. But the truth. Would always be the truth. And the truth is. You are what you eat. Hello somebody. You're all still thinking about my donuts. <laughs> Keep your mind here. Peter says in verse 3. Give me verse 3. Hey. If you have tasted. The kindness of God. If you have. Oh, taste and see, as the psalmist says in Psalm 34, verse 8. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Peter says, then you won't want no junk food. Oh, somebody didn't hear me. Peter said, then you won't be wanting no junk food. See, Ah, this is going to be good. If anybody knew what the kindness of the Lord 
tasted like. If anybody have tasted and seen how good the Lord is, it was Peter. You all remember I'm Peter. <laughs> who denied the Lord three times. And would the Lord restore back three times and over. That's the kindness of the Lord Amen. that Peter was talking about here. So that 30 years ago, ah, oh Lord, let me preach this message like I know it. 30 years has gone by and the taste of that kindness is still in Peter's mouth. That Peter says, if you have tasted of the kindness of the Lord, you won't go back eating junk food. It's like this. It's like this. Back in my seminary days, when I was in Bible college, I used to eat a lot of bologna bagel sandwiches. I was so full of bologna. <laughs> I, I ate bologna breakfast. Somebody saying, yeah, pastor, you're still full of bologna. <laughs> <laughs> I ate bologna for breakfast. I ate bologna for lunch. I ate bologna for dinner. You have to understand, as a seminary student, I was poor. Not poor, poor. <laughs> Southern poor. <laughs> I was poor and single. Bad combination. <laughs> it's one thing to be poor, <laughs> but then when you're poor and single, <laughs> oh Lord help you. And then I married, I got married to one Miss Marion Joy Tomlinson. <laughs> Thank you, Uncle Tip. I, 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 and my wifey, and my wifey started cooking me some sumptuous gourmet meals like lasagna and pork roast and roast beef and garlic mashed potatoes with us with sauteed vegetables. No, no, no pandemic yam. She can't do pandemic yam. Are you kidding? She don't she don't do pandemic yam. Right away, I became the envy of all the other single seminary students. Because they could smell <laughs> and they could see my new diet. And I even look like my new diet. <laughs> if you know what I'm talking about. I mean, overnight, my diet changed. If you know my wife, you'd know she's a good cook. Those of you who have been to our house for dinner, let me hear you say amen to that. Yeah. <laughs> and when I married Marion, Lady Marion, Suddenly, my taste bud changed. <laughs> Uncle Tim is really, is really into this mess. He's really digging it this morning. I love it. I love it. Bring it on, bro. My, 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 bud, my, my taste bud changed. And you know, since my seminary days, God is my witness. I've never once tasted a bologna sandwich. I don't even know what a bologna tastes more like anymore. <laughs> you, you know how, you know how, this happens to us when we're in Nigeria, right? You know how you eat one certain food every day of your life? And then when you come and you see different things. For instance, I don't eat Gary. I don't remember the, you ask, I don't remember the last time I've read Gary in 35 years. Even when I go back to Nigeria. I don't eat Gary because every day I eat Gary. In the morning, Gary. In the afternoon, Gary. In the evening, Gary. I put water in Gary. I put peanut in Gary. Oh, I put everything. Gary, 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 Gary everywhere. <laughs> oh, that's a joke. All, all my Nigerian folks know what I'm talking about. I was so full of Gary. I hated Gary. 
Come on, brother Tyro, you know what I'm saying? Yours is Amala. Uh, where, where's my Edo people here? I, I don't have them. Oh, Mary, no, Mary is Nigerian. Mary is uh, Yoruba. I'm looking for my, my, my Shekiri woman is not here. Ask will be Begiri. I don't even know what bologna tastes like anymore. Why? Because, watch this. Watch this. Once you have tasted Lady Miriam's lasagna and a roast beef and a pork roast, it's hard to go back to bologna sandwich. You know what I'm talking about. And Peter says, what God has offered us in respect to salvation in Jesus, once you've tasted it, once you've tasted of the kindness of the Lord, and once you've come and see that the Lord is good, you will not want to go back eating whatever junk food you've been eating before you met Jesus. Because every day with Jesus is sweeter, is sweeter than the day oh, where are all my old taste and see that the Lord is good people of God in this house. Holler at your boy. Give the Lord some good praise. Oh, when the enemy came in like a flood, it was the kindness of the Lord that raised up a standard. When it looks like all hope was lost, it was the kindness of the Lord. Oh, that sucked me through. When the doctor said no way, oh, the kindness of the Lord said yes way to you. To God, to God, to God. Oh, I better hurry up. I better hurry up. I better hurry up. I better hurry up. So, so verse 1. Verse 1 is a list of five junk foods. Five of them. That comes to your table as you sit in the restaurant. At my table every day. That we need to say no to. If we want to grow up in Christ. Let's look at them quickly one by one if we can. The first one is malice. Everybody say malice. <laughs> you, you know what malice is? Kakia in Greek, kakia. Malice is that natural desire to want to hurt somebody by what you say or with something bad happened to somebody, like get struck by a lightning or something. It's an attitude that begins inside of you. But eventually finds his way out. You don't see it, it starts in and it comes out. And Peter says, if you want to grow, that's a spiritual junk food that will stunt your growth as a Christian if you eat of it. I wish I had time. I run out of time. I was going to give you an illustration. We'll do that next time. The second junk food that Peter listed us for us here is guile. Somebody say guile. Mm -hmm. that, that's an old word. An old word we don't hear anymore. Is guile. No, we don't hear that anymore. Uh, uh, but, 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 but another word for guile is deceit. It's a word that means to catch with a bait to catch with a bait now Dickin Kuma Peter was a seasoned, seasoned fisherman so he knew what this word means guile because he was a fisherman when you put a bait at the end of a hook to catch a fish what you're essentially doing is you're deceiving that fish am I right okay you, 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 you're lying to that rainbow trout or you're lying to that pike that you got something real juicy and yummy for him 
but, but you're not telling him he's a real juicy and yummy supper that you're bringing home. That's the seat. Now, now, I have no problem if you do that with a fish. <laughs> but when you play a trick on people, in order to get your way with what you want, then Peter says, you become like Satan, who is the father of lies from the beginning. Is the master deceiver. Oh. Let, 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 me, let me put it to you another way. When you feed on the seat, you will be in no mood to eat the real food when they bring it to your table. Because the seat fills you up so quickly. Ah. Oh. Oh. oh, go go ask Adam. Go ask Adam and Eve in the garden. They were already served the real food from God. But when the deceiver came into the garden and came with his junk food, he says to them in Genesis chapter 3 verse 1, put it up. Indeed, as God said, you shall not eat from any tree from the garden. Let me ask you, when did God say, they can't eat from any tree from the garden. When? T -t Tell your neighbor that's Gaia. That's Gaia. Gaia. Mm -hmm. that, that's Gaia. And, and, and you need to stay away from it. You see, Eve's problem started when she stood there talking to a snake. That was when the problem started. No, 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 no. If you are a child of the most high God, you don't stand there talking to a snake. No, you command a snake to shut up in the mighty name of Jesus. Because a snake has no business talking to you. That's where the problem got started. He was listening, huh? Give it to me. No, 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 no. You don't listen to a snake. You command a snake and tell a snake where to go. Oh, 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 I wish I had time. But that, that was a little rima word for somebody right there, Dickie. But the next junk food, the next junk food you want to stay away from is hypocrisy. Hypocrisy. You all know what a hypocrite is, don't you? It's the Greek word. It's the Greek word that, 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 uh, uh, the Greek word hypocritos. Hypocritos. Where's my. Um, the, no, the, the mask and the thing they used to be there. And the daily bread. Yeah. Hypocritos. That's the word, hypocritos. Now, the Greek, when they're in the theater, they put on a mask. Uh, so the word hip hypocrisy comes from the word to wear a mask. Is the idea of pretending to be someone you're not. Uh, how, 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 how do you like how do you like this hypocritos? <laughs> how, how do you like this hypocritos? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that's how they'll go in the theater. They're pretending to be who they're not. So, so. If somebody pretended to be what he or she is not, that person is a hypocrite. And my brothers and my sisters, so too a person can wear a mask on Sunday and as soon as the church is done, they will take off their mask and they go back to their real self, their real cursing and gossiping self, their real backbiting and warmongering self, their real cheating and conniving self. And out come the mask again on Sunday. Hello, sister. Hello, brother. Come on now. You know, and I know, that nothing will take away people's 
appetite for God more quicker than hypocrisy. And how in the world are you going to grow in Christ and in grace yourself if you are up today, down tomorrow? How are you going to grow if you're wishy-washy in the Lord? We don't know who you are. We don't really know who you are. Oh, come on, talk to me, somebody. Tell your neighbor, be real, be real, be real, be real, be real. Here's the fourth, here's the fourth, fourth junk food on Peter's menu list. Uh, I'm not going to even ask if this is blessing anybody. <laughs> no, number four, envy. Now, this is one big, ugly, big, ugly sin that Christians don't like to confess. Have you ever seen somebody get blessed? And you wish you were the one that God blessed. See, I told you I'm not seeing any hands up. I, I told you that's a, 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 bad, a hard one to confess. What's even worse than jealousy is getting mad that somebody got blessed with what you want. Now, if you're growing like you ought to grow, you know what the Bible says in Romans chapter 12, verse 15, that if you rejoice with those who rejoice, then that same God that gives your friend the man she's rejoicing on, that same God can give you your man for you to rejoice about too. Because the Bible says, God is no respecter of persons. Acts chapter 10 verse 34. God is no respecter of person. Meaning what he did for one, he can do for Oh, can I get, a, can I get some witnesses in this place? Then, then, then here, here's, the last, here's the last junk food. Here's the last junk food. Uh, Peter wants us to stay away from before he tells us the good stuff. Let's quickly look at it. Number five. Simply put, it says slander. Slander. Slander is when you go around speaking evil about somebody else behind their back. The key word there is behind their back. If you want to speak evil, speak evil in front of me. Speak it ahead to me. Say, Pastor, you are. You are. You are. But when you go behind my back and you're saying, Oh, uh, Donna, that pastor is a. Uh, that slander. And guess what? A person will listen to gossip and a person will gossip about eating from the same junk. You, you know, you know. <laughs> You, you know how I know, uh, bro Wally. You know how I know, uh, how I know uh, that I've grown out of gossip. You know how I know I've grown out of gossip. When somebody comes to tell me something about you, I'll say to that person, "Is it okay if I told you so so and so what you just told me about them?" If that person turn around and say, oh, no, no, pastor, pastor, I just wanted you to know. <laughs> then you know what? That gossiper will never come to me again. Because they know I'm going to quote them what they say. But the moment you start listening to it, you yourself have become a junk hitter as much as the one who is feeding you the junk. So, 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 so. So, I know it's not going to be shouting morning this morning. But I came to tell you that when you're feeding yourself on the junk food of malice and the junk food of guile 
and the junk food of hypocrisy and the junk food of envy and slander Peter is saying eventually give me the second lifeline Peter is saying eventually your bitterness no the second go back go back your bitterness will kill your appetite for God's sweetness Ooh, that is so good did you hear what I just said everything he listed those five things will kill your appetite for God because their bitterness every single one of them have their root in bitterness but on the contrary I'm going to the good stuff now somebody say the juicy one is coming a juicy one is coming but on the contrary sister Elsie Peter is also saying when you've tasted of the Lord's goodness when you've tasted of the Lord's kindness is Asad in Hebrew Asad is loving kindness you cannot but help to want the second spiritual growth modus operandi you're going to want this one number two put it up get in soul food Yay! no more junk food now we want soul food somebody says soul food oh that's good that's good this, this is going to be good this is going to be good this way i really want to take you this after this morning quickly see it in verse two in verse two peter says like newborn babes long for the pure milk of the word that it may what that you may what that you may what in respect to salvation good god of heaven what is peter saying here auntie d simply put peter is saying what good food is to the body the word of god is to the soul You gotta want it. See, all the women and the men that goes to Bible study, men's Bible study and ladies' Bible study, they want it. They want it. That's why they're there. Digging, sometimes we force people for nothing. Because if they really want it, Oh, you, you, you're going to hear me. 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 He says, if you want to grow, you must eat. And don't just want to eat. Watch this. See, see. See, Lady Kemi wanted this. Instead of this. But do you know what? Either of these two can fill you up. If you eat this, it will fill you up. If you eat this, it will fill you up. But watch this. This has zero nutrients. But this is God. Oh, come on now. Come on now. Somebody help me. So, 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 Peter is saying, want to eat, but don't just want to eat. <laughs> hey. He says, like newborn babes, long for the pure milk of the word. Have you ever seen a baby long for a mama's milk? <laughs> when a baby is hungry and a baby isn't eating, that baby is always faithful to let mama know and everyone else around know exactly what they want am i right mm. so so when a baby long for milk another word for long is crave in niv niv say crave when a baby crave for milk you would hear about it quickly they don't keep any secrets about it. It's an unmistakable sound effect. <laughs> the 
Did you hear how that baby changed gears? That's going to wake you up. I was playing that. I was looking for this sound effect yesterday in my study. And I was playing it. I didn't even realize it was, it was loud. And Isaiah one is, is in his room. Isaiah got up. He woke Isaiah up. I go, where did the baby come from? Where's the baby? Where's the baby? <laughs> I go, <laughs> I go, where, where did the baby? Where? He said, oh my goodness, that thing wake me up. He said, mom, dad, right? He said, mom, dad, is that how, do, do we wake you up like that too? I go, yeah. <laughs> do you? <laughs> do you? <laughs> do you? <laughs> do you imagine the mama of that crying baby do you imagine that mama saying, ah, oh, I can't believe that, 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 that demanding little brat. When is he going to learn manners? Can he see that mama needs sleep? <laughs> oh, oh, excuse me, pardon me. She can say all that, but that baby ain't hearing none of that. Why? Because when a baby is hungry, a baby longs for the milk like his life depended on it. Talk to me, somebody. It's like that same passion. It's like that same desire. It's like that same craving. That Peter says, when we are to long for the word of God, and the key word here is long. Somebody say long. Meaning an intense desire. Uh, you, I got to have this desire. T tell your neighbor, I got to have it. 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 I had a friend story. I'm almost done. I had a funny story about a, a guy named Alfred. And Alfred was a Baptist. And he lived in a rural town back in the Midwest. Everyone in his community were Catholics. Except Al. Well, that posed a problem. He posed a problem on Friday evenings. When he would barbecue his beef in his backyard. And the smell would go spread throughout the whole Catholic community. And if you know staunch Catholics... They eat fish, not meat on Friday. So, so, so the community decided to talk about it. This, this got them, and then they decided to go talk to Al about it. Let's go talk to Al about it. So, so they talked about going to talk to Al about converting into Roman Catholicism. So they went and said, Al, uh, listen, you're the only Baptist in this Catholic community. And the nearest Baptist church to you is the next town, which is so far away. So, so, so why, why, why don't you just convert in and be a Catholic and be one of us and live in our community? I thought about it, and he came back to them. I said, okay, that's a good idea. I'll be a Catholic. So the day came, they arranged with him to meet with a priest. And Al knelt down, and the priest laid his hands on Al and, and, and said, Alfred, you were born a Baptist. And you're raised a Baptist. But now, so he sprinkled holy water on him. But now, you are Catholic. That was it. I got up, hugged the priest, hugged all his Roman Catholic friends, and, and they went off. And everything went well that week until Friday. Friday. <laughs> until Friday evening. And once again, all of Al's neighbors could smell beef being barbecued at Al's house. So, so they go, we got, we, we got to go talk to our friend. He's changed. He's not, he's not, he's not, he's, he can't do this. He can't do this. So they went over. And just as they were entering Al's backyard, they peered over the fence. And there was Al standing over his barbecue. Talking the, to the beef, saying, You were born a beef. You are raised a beef. And then sprinkling ho and then sprinkling salt and water, salt and pepper on the on the beef. And said, But now you're fish. Come, come on now. Come on now. That's craving. 
That's craving you all. Al was bent and determined to eat his beef no matter what. He craved it, wouldn't you say? And somebody here, it's that same passion, that same craving, like a baby for milk and like Al for a beef that God is saying he wants the new nature in you and the new nature in me to be able to crave what you are crying out for that you're crying out for the milk of God I want it let me ask you what do you crave for the most what do you crave for because Jesus says to tell you in Matthew chapter 5 verse 6 blessed are you <laughs> if you hunger and thirst for righteousness because you will be oh, 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 oh he didn't say blessed are those who casually snack after righteousness because you see some church folk can go for a week or two without cracking open this book. Talk to me, somebody. And somebody holla, preach it, Pastor. Oh, it got quiet. Somebody holla, preach it, Pastor. So, so if you grow, if you want, if you're gonna grow spiritually. You're going to have to get in soul food. And it's not just going to happen because you sit in church. I watch people sit in church. <laughs> I, I know a lot about you. <sighs> By how you receive the word. You want me to tell the truth? You'll be surprised what I can know by just looking at you right now. Some of you are here, but you're not really here. <laughs> Do you know there are two people, there are two groups of people here in this room? The first group of people are the attendees, the second group of people are the seekers. I'm not going to ask you which one you are, you know. Because some of you are here right now, but you're not really here. You're not really opening up your spirit to receive. The spirit of God can be falling down like a rain. And you still have your mouth closed. Instead of sticking out your tongue, and get your mouth wet. But you rather act cute. You, 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 you rather fold your arms. You know what somebody told me one time? Let me, let me give you a secret. In my communication class, I was taught, and a lot of people say this, a lot of leadership people say this, whenever you're in a place, and people are like this, It's a no-no. Especially in the house of the Lord. Because this is a close spirit. But when you're like this, you're saying, Lord, I'm open to receive. You rather look cute and cross your cute legs and, and go, oh, oh. He's not talking to me. He's not talking to me. Oh, 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 I wish so-so and so was here in the church today to come and hear what the pastor is saying. No, yeah. no, 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 no. You're not hungering enough. You're not craving enough. You're not longing enough. Because when it is that you're hungering and thirsting after righteousness, Jesus says you will forget all about your cute self. You forget all about your educated self. You forget all about your reserved self. 
and you say, Pastor, I need a word. Oh, you say, Pastor, feed me. You say, man of God, I need more of God. Somebody holler more. And this hungry brother and this hungry sister won't leave this place until I get some soul food. Where are my all hungry brothers and sisters in this house? They say you, you should deny your craving. But this is one craving. Peter says you can't deny. Hello somebody. Peter says in verse 2. Like newborn babes crave the pure. Whew. Dickin, that word pure jumped at me in my study this week. Oh, I go pure. When you see pure, what does that mean? That means there's a milk of the word that is diluted. When you see pure, that means there's some pure. He said, What you want is a pure one. Uh, it, it, it's the Greek word adolos. Ever say pure? It, it means unadulterated, undiluted, not watered down. Think about it. Think about it. Does the baby want 2% milk or skim milk? No, no, no. That's what you drink. <laughs> no, 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 no. Babies want the real stuff, the undiluted stuff that comes straight, right from mama's chest. Because they need to grow. And they need to put on weight. So when you give them fake milk, they'll go like this to you. When Adam was little, and, and his mother wasn't around, and he was hungry, and I wanted to give him something, so I gave him a fake milk, and go, in my face. is saying like a baby whenever someone is trying to give you a fake milk of the word of God like the Bible plus philosophy the Bible plus psychology the Bible plus Scientology the Bible plus new age no 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 Peter said you should go like this because there's a lot of word watered down preaching these days yeah. that you got to be careful for. You know, you know, make me feel good sermon. They don't even call sin, sin anymore these days. They call it my bad. Your bad. <laughs> You'll be shocked. You'll be shocked, Dick and Ty, at how many people in the church are so biblical illiterates because the pure word is real. You'll be shocked at how many people, even in the church, who think God help those who help themselves is a direct quote from the Bible. You'll be shocked at people who in this in church, I'm not saying in this church particularly, but people who come to church thinking that Joan of Ark is the wife of Noah. Yeah. You'll be shocked at people who think Sodom and Gomorrah are husbands and wife. <laughs> reminds me, I'm, I'm going to finish with this. Reminds me, of a story, you, you, reminds me of a story of a church who just called a young pastor to come and pastor. And this young pastor decided to go around into the Sunday school to see how everybody is doing, to see how the church education is progressing. And, and he went to, to this all boys Sunday school class to check first. And when he got there, uh, he stood up and, and he, he said, Boys, can you please tell me who knocked down the walls of Jericho? And the boys were silent. They were silent as, as, as night and, and began to look at each other, going around denying, Oh, no, no, I didn't do it. I didn't do it. I didn't do it. I didn't do it. I swear I wasn't even near it. <laughs> And the young pastor was, was absolutely appalled, appalled and, and, and bewildered by the responses. He couldn't believe their lack of knowledge, Bible knowledge. So he called the board of deacons together to a meeting. 
and he began to tell the board what had happened. And he said, I went to the boys' Sunday school class, and I asked who knocked down the walls of Jericho. And none of them knew. There was dead silence in the board too. And finally, the senior deacon, one of the senior deacon got up and said, Pastor, now listen, it appears that this matter is really bothering you. But I want to assure you, I've known these boys since they were born. And they're all good boys. And if they say they don't know who did it, <laughs> I believe them. <laughs> Let's just get some money out of the renovation fund. <laughs> and fix the damn wall. <laughs> I get her. <laughs> Come on now. Come on now. What, what I'm saying to you is, what I'm saying to you is, when we call ourselves the people of the word, then we got to be about the word. Come on, somebody. We can't say we're people of the word and not be about the word. Oh, while milk is good for a baby for a while. But I'm saying there comes a time when a baby needs more than feeding on, on a, uh, this thing keeps moving. Where's mine? Needs, a baby needs more than, more than, and you as a Christian, there comes a time when a baby needs more than feeding the bottle, feeding bottle, to moving out to solid food. And it comes a time when you as a new Christian too, all you can take in is daily bread. But there comes a time when you're going to move from taking daily bread and not just reading, and not just reading one, one verse, uh, one verse a day because a verse a day keeps the devil away. But there comes a time when you got to open up this book and dig into it and say, Lord, I need a word. Lord, feed me from the word. Feed me till I want no more. Feed me so I can pray your word back to you. Oh, because you know Give me the last final point. Final point. Because your growth rate. Write this down. If you haven't wrote anything down, write this down. This is the synonym of all I'm talking to you. Because your growth rate will have to equal your capacity to receive. How much you want to grow will depend on your capacity to receive. So that you can come to church every Sunday and say, Pastor, here's my little teacup. Fancy little teacup. Thank you. Fill it up with that little spiritual sermonette. And, 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 oh, that's just fine. That's just fine. And I'll come back again a week or two. Or you can come with this capacity and say, no, boy. No, 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 man. No, man, no, man, no, man. No, man. I, I need a real meal. Amen. I need a real meal. Amen. Pastor, fill it up. Pastor, fill it up. Because a man shall not live by bread alone, but by the word. And every word that proceeds from the man of God. Man of God, feed me. I need more of God. I can't do anything without him. If I don't have him, I'll die. Feed me. Because when this is done, next week, I'll come back for a refill and fill me again. Or you can go, you can be like the guy who is really, really, really hungry. And he says, oh, no, dude, that won't do me. <laughs> that won't do me, pastor. <laughs> oh, this brother, <laughs> this sister is in a real need. <laughs> this sister and brother really need a word. <laughs> oh, pastor, <laughs> fill my cooler. <laughs> 
Feed me! Feed me! Bread of heaven, feed me! Till I want no more! Because your word, as Job says, is more for me than my desired food. Feed me till I want no more. Bread of heaven, man of heaven. I don't know who I'm talking to. But if you are hungry here this morning, lift up those hands and holler, fill me up, Lord. My time is up. It's communion time, worship team.